Welcome back everyone. So I'm going to be uploading three videos with a quite an interesting puzzle. So we have some items. Uh, right now we only have the lighter so we can pick up ourselves a lighter and we have four pillars that we need to set on fire within 20 seconds. Otherwise, well, uh, the fire goes out. But if we manage to do that, we can see there is a next puzzle which comes out of the ground, which we then need to rotate in the correct rotation, all three of these objects. So let me get the correct one. And once we do, the doors are open and we can go to the next level. So first I want to set up a very very basic inventory system for this because we are going to use some items uh, in order to finish this puzzle. So first let's go to blueprints and let's create a new blueprint structure. I'm going to call this S inventory and inside of this structure I'm just going to hold two variables. So the first one is going to be the name. Uh, this is going to be used in order to know whether we have this item or not. And this is going to be a string just in case if we need a longer one. And the second one is going to be the icon so that we can actually display this on our screen. And this needs to be a texture 2D. And that's basically all. Now uh, we can go to our character. So top down character. And inside of here, let me just add a new variable and I'm going to call this inventory. And then this variable should be our S inventory structure type. And we got to make this into an array so that we can hold multiple elements in this. Now I'm going to go back to the content folder and inside of here, I'm going to add some widgets so that we can actually display our uh, inventory. The first one is going to be UI HUD. And the second one is going to be the UI item. Let's first work on the UI item. And inside of this UI item, I'm going to add a size box first. So let's add a size box. I'm going to change the sizing to be, so let's override the default values. And I'm going to make this wide 100 and high 100. There we go. And then I'm going to right click the canvas panel and replace with a child so that the size, uh, size box would be the parent for this whole thing. Then inside of this size box, I'm going to add a border, which then will hold our icon. So I'm going to select the border. I'm going to select the brush and create a binding for the brush. Now inside of here, we're going to need a variable, which is actually going to hold the item information. So let's create a new variable and I'm going to call this item. Now the variable type is, again is going to be our S inventory structure. And we got to make sure that we set this to be instance editable and exposed on spawn so that we can provide this thing whenever we create this widget. So let's make our slate brush for this binding because here we need to provide our icon, the image. So I'm going to drag in the item and I'm going to break the inventory structure and connect icon to the image. And this is basically it. Now one more thing maybe for the styling just in case. If we would select our border, uh, let's give this some padding. So let's give a padding of five so that our icons wouldn't be stuck together. Now, this is all good for the item. Now let's go to our UI HUD. And well, we are going to use the, this as a full screen HUD, just in case maybe we might have some level information or whatever. So the first thing I'm going to add a border to this so that I have like an actual background for the inventory part. I'm going to move this to the bottom and let's make this x like 700 y 100 and then this would be minus 350 and minus 100 and anchored to the bottom now on top of this border i'm gonna add a scroll box just in case if we have many items so that we can scroll through them now we got to make sure that in this case the orientation then is horizontal so that we would scroll horizontally and also make sure that this is set to be is variable so that we can access this in our graph now let's go to our graph and on event construct, let's cast to our top down character so we can get its inventory. So as an object, we can get the owning player pawn as the object. And then as the top down character, we can get our inventory variable. There we go. Then from our inventory variable, we can do a loop for each so that we can actually create our items. So on the loops body, we can then create a widget and let's select our UI item and then the arrays element can be this item. Then let's drag in our scroll box so that from the scroll box we can add a child. And the content is going to be our return value from our widget. So basically our widget. Now 
if we don't have plenty enough of items inside of our inventory, if we don't have any, it's not going to display any icons. It's just going to be an empty scroll bar. Uh, so what I'm going to do actually is generate some empty icons so that it looks a little bit fuller and nicer. So from the inventory, I want to get the length of my array to know how many entries I have in there. And I want to check whether this value right here is smaller or equal to let's say let's add like 10 instances so to let's say to 10 actually instead of smaller or equal just smaller smaller than 10 then from the loops completion we can do an if on this condition to check if it's true and then if it is true then i want to do a loop just a regular for loop from the flow control to have an integer now the thing is that for this one uh, we always want to begin at zero and end at some different value so what i'm going to do first is from the length of this i'm going to do a minus integer minus integer and i'm going to do uh, so i'm going to move this down and i'm going to do 10 minus the length of our inventory so we have 10 minus the length and then i also want to do minus one more because well we begin at zero um, and this thing right here begins at one so we can then use this value for our last index and then we can do pretty much the same thing we did up here so i'm just going to copy these nodes down here connect the execution to the loop body and let's make ourselves the inventory structure so the item doesn't uh, the name doesn't really matter uh, because we're not really using this right now uh, but the icon does matter so let's find ourselves an icon make sure it's not a transparent one uh, so i hope this one isn't just to be safe let's open this up now it seems like this isn't a transparent one so we are going to use this one now we got to make sure to actually display this so let's go to our top down character let's find ourselves the begin play event and on this event we can then create ourselves the widget which is our ui hud and then we can just simply add to viewport there we go let's press play and let's let's test this out press play there we go we have our icons if we scroll you can see we are scrolling through our items now let's create ourselves the actual item that we are going to use and in our case this is going to be the lighter so for this i'm just going to create a regular actor and let's call this lighter item let's open this up uh, i don't really have any meshes for this so instead of having an actual mesh you would probably have an actual mesh uh, instead i'm going to just use a regular cube for this one thing that i do want to do is first make this a bit smaller and also I want to add this thing to have a sphere collision so that we can get near this and then whenever we are near this so that we would pick this up on a keyboard key so I'm gonna make this sphere a little bit bigger so like 150 there we go on the extent and now let's scroll till the very bottom until we find the events and let's create a component begin overlap event then over here I'm going to cast to our top down character using the other actor as a object reference and then in our top down character we need to create a new variable and I'm going to call this interactable interactable and let's make this into an actors type so that we can reuse this for different actors and this should be a single entry now back in our lighter we can then set that as the third person character we can set our interactable to be a reference to ourselves so interactable will be self so basically this uh, lighter item now let's create ourselves an interface so that we can interact with things because we are going to have more things to interact with so i'm going to right click blueprints and i'm going to create a blueprint interface and i'm going to call this interaction interface let's open this up and I'm going to rename the default function to be, uh, let's call this start interaction. Now this thing, well, we do need to provide one input for it. And let's give this an input. Now the input needs to be the player. And well, I'm just going to specify a specific type. So this is the top down character. There we go. Compile and save this. Class settings and add ourselves this newly created interact interaction interface there we go we have that 
we can compile and save this. I'm going to remove all of these things. And now we can look for our, in the event graph, we can look for our event start interaction. There we go. And as soon as we do this, we can then cast to our top down character. There we go. And then we can get the inventory array and we can add to our inventory array. So we can add, connect the execution and let's make ourselves the item. So I'm going to give this a name because this one now is going to be important. So this is the lighter and provide an icon for it. And I don't have an icon for it. So I'm just going to pick a random one. So I guess this will be good enough. There we go. Uh, this is giving us a note here yeah, because this is a top down character reference. So we actually don't even need to cast to it. We can do it like directly like this. There we go. So we get, get its properties. And then after we have added to our inventory, then we can just simply destroy the actor because well, we have picked it up and added that to our inventory. Now, before we are done over here, what we should probably also do is set our interactable value back to none. Uh, so that whenever we leave this thing, so that we wouldn't be able to press E when we are at the other side of the map. So let's select our sphere again. Again, scroll down till the very bottom and create an end overlap event. Let's copy all of these nodes, connect them the same way, the execution and the other actor as the uh, object reference, but simply remove the self node so that we would set the interactable to be an empty value. So whenever we leave this, it's going to set this back to none. So now we can go to our top down character and actually start running our start interact. So in our top down character, I'm going to create a then keyboard let's go to our e lighter event. item. And on this event, I'm going to get the interactable and I'm going to check if it is valid with a question mark so that it has an execution route. Here we go. And then if this is valid, then we can run our start interaction message the target then needs to be our interactable and the player is going to be a reference to ourselves now the thing is that well since in our ui hud we create all of the widgets on event construct that means that well whenever we pick up an item the hud is not going to be updated so what i actually want to do is create a new custom event inside of our ui hud and let's call this add items just simply add items it will be a good name and then once we have this i'm going to drag in the scroll box and i'm going to clear the children so clear children and then connect this one to our top down character uh, the same way as the event construct so this basically is going to remove all the entries from the scroll box and simply recreate. Now, in order for us to run this, what we want to do is go back to our top down character and at the top where we are actually creating this and adding the widget to our screens, we want to promote this to a variable and let's call this QI HUD. Now we are going to be able to access this and run the events that are living inside of this widget. So now that means that, well, we can now start interacting with our HUD and I'm going to do that inside of my lighter item. So whenever I destroy an item, what I'm going to do is as the player, I'm going to get the UI HUD. I'm going to move this up here and then I'm going to add item. And this basically is going to refresh our scroll box. So now let's compile and save this, bring a lighter into our world over here, press play. Let's walk up to it, press E. As you can see, we have picked up a lighter. So the inventory part is done and I see you in the next one where we actually start working on the pillars.